Hi, my name is Carly Blacksell and I'm from Human Happiness and welcome to your full moon in Aries on the 25th of September yoga class. If this is your very first time, then a very big welcome to you. Um, if you have any concerns about your physical, mental or emotional health with respect to doing a yoga class, please do consult your health professional before continuing. Um, I do, however, do um, modifications for any health considerations um, that, that are of concern as we work our way through the, the work today, as we work our way through the yoga. Um, so a uh, big welcome and uh, we're just starting off with a, an activation. So uh, as we always do, just shaking the hands down to the, towards the earth and just shaking from the shoulders all the way down to the earth. And we do approximately the same kind of activation each time we, we do um, prepare for the yoga class. Um, it's basically just a warm up. It also warms up your, um, prepares your spine for the yoga, um, prepares your body for the movements. So um, it's, it's approximately the same each time. Bring your hands up. If you do have blood pressure, heart condition, shoulder issues, just keep the hands a little bit lower, not bringing them quite so high up when we do the movements and around to the side. So as we do each time, uh, we actually have a look at uh, the astrological and numerological uh, energy at the moment around this, uh, this full moon in Aries. And, uh, and of course the yoga class is actually created uh, to counter any, any negative uh, things that might be going on that you might be picking up. Just doing a gentle circle here. Again, keep the head above the waist if you have any blood pressure, heart condition, uh, vertigo, um, and even if your um, first three days your menstrual cycle, etc. Just... Um, Keep your head above, above the waist there. Otherwise, you're quite welcome to go a bit further down, shaking it out. <laughs> yeah, so um, we have a look at the, ast the astrology and the numerology. And just to make note, in case I do forget to do it later, um, we are having a two universal month. Let's go the other way. And in a two universal year, now that's actually quite significant. Okay, there's a lot of two stuff going on. So it's a really... Um, good time um, to work through your relationships and um, harmonize and balance um, with those around you um, to cooperate and collaborate. Um, so that's what the energy is actually getting you to do. And of course, if you resist this, uh, it becomes a lot uh, trickier um, to, um, to get through the month because the universe is trying to get you to actually cooperate with people. <laughs> So um, have a little look at that. If you if you feel like um, you've been rubbing, you know, um, uh, negatively up against people and um, really struggling with that, have a look and uh, at whether you're actually cooperating, and collaborating, and, and working in harmony and in balance, or whether you're actually making that really difficult for yourself. Uh, particularly if you have quite a few ones in your birthday, and if you have no twos, fives or fours in your birth date, um, you will always feel like you're alone anyway, even if you have people around you. So um, and there's, a, there's a whole thing behind that that's actually quite a significant thing in your, in your numerology chart. So, so that's, what, that's what the numerology is actually doing uh, with us uh, this month. And on the day of the, of the full moon, uh, it's actually a nine universal day. Of course, you'll have your own uh, personal day as well, which will be possibly quite different. Um, but it is about doing the right thing and about, about looking at the values and beliefs and, and the way you're going about um, uh, conducting your relationships. Okay, it is definitely about relationships. And we have a lot of astrological stuff at the moment, so just reaching around. Feel a lovely little stretch in the side of your body there. Reaching around. Um, quite a bit of astrological stuff around relationships as well at the moment. So just tapping opposite knee with opposite hand. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of um, Libra energy. Of course, we, are, we have Libra, um, the sun in Libra at the moment, um, which obviously is going to have a big influence. And Libra is, of course, all about relationships. Um, and uh, we also have, um, it's the equinox um, to Libra. So uh, the sun is going to be right over the equator, um, which is really awesome in another way because it, it really thins that veil um, and allows us to access higher energy um, information uh, when we meditate um, or when we're just in, in stillness a lot easier. So that's, that's really cool as well. And we'll be doing that. Uh, we'll be working on that as we go towards our meditation today. So just little circles with the hips here. Lovely. Um, so yeah, we also have, let's just have a look here. Um, well, of course, we've still got Mars square Uranus. Uh, we'll go back to that first. 
and it, it was actually exact on the 18th of this month, the 18th of September, um, for the last time, for the third time. And it will dissipate um, towards the end of this month. So we're finally going to be out of that very, very um, uh, eruptive and volatile, let's go the other way, um, demanding freedom and, and, and quite aggressive um, sort of energy there. Um, and the moon is also conjunct Pluto, which can actually also, um, on the 19th, which is also very intense feeling. So if you've come to this yoga class feeling a little bit a little bit shaken up, um, there's a really good reason for that. <laughs> Let's do some figure eights. <laughs> um, so but that, that will, will start to dissipate as we get to the end of the month. But um, this class will definitely help you to, to come to a place of stillness and peace so that you can really harness that, that, um, that Libra equinox. Let's go the other way um, and, and, and let go of anything that might be happening with, the, with that, um, the Mars, Mars energy. Um, so also, um, bring the hands up and just doing gentle infinity symbols there. And again, keep those hands low if you need to, if there's blood pressure, heart condition, shoulder issues, and not bringing your, your head below your waist if you have any of those concerns we mentioned before. Uh, the full moon in Aries is also quite close to the equinox. Um, and of course, it's opposite the sun, which is on the supergalactic center at the moment. Uh, which can, this can all create quite a bit of messy and chaotic um, and disruptive energy. Um, so you might be feeling that as well. A lot of passion, a lot of fire around, a lot of craziness going on. So again, the, 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 um, the postures that we're going to be doing in this class is really going, are really going to help calm, calm that down. And of course the pranayama as well and the meditation. So just, just scooping under here. All right, and um, we also have, um, yeah, so the sun is in Libra and the moon is in Aries. Um, so it's very much about us, which is Libra, versus we, which is Aries. So, um, sorry, the other way around. Us, us and me, me sorry. Um, us, I've actually written it wrong. <laughs> it's us, um, us, which is the Libra, and me, which is um, Aries. So you have this, this big um, conflict going on. Uh, um, whether you know you're working in a team or work, whether you're working by yourself, and again, if you do have a lot of one energy in your in your numerology chart, um, as I was saying before, uh, or some other influences there, karmic debts, karmic lessons, etc., you will you will struggle to work in a team. Um, also, two energy if you've got some things going on there, um, and and so that Aries, when that Aries flares up as a full moon, you might find it really difficult to work with someone. You might be wanting to do it all by yourself. So um, that's going to come up <laughs> quite big at the, at the moment. Uh, and also the sun and moon um, are square Saturn, which is going to be a, a big uh, reality check on your relationship. Okay, If you do have a relationship at the moment or potential relationship, or maybe even your relationship with yourself. Um, and uh, the strong relationships will be consolidated and, and um, cemented and the weaker ones will be really tested and may not even make it through uh, the next sort of few weeks um, because, of, because of that energy. So now just um, palms facing away from each other, just open up the shoulders, breathe out, and then breathing in, going back, and just being very careful with your, with your back bend there when you go back. Uh, if you have any hernia issues, thyroid issues, uh, recent abdominal surgery, just be very, very gentle with your back bends. Breathing out and breathing in. So yeah, it is a lot about relationships in this particular uh, moon, this particular full moon. Uh, we also have a trying in Saturn and, and Uranus, um, which means our new ideas, those things that we've been, we've been stewing up over the last couple of months, we've been, we've been brewing some, some new ideas, some, some new forward thinking, um, some passions. Um, now is a really good time. They will be cemented if you... Um, uh, it can become permanent with, with this sort of energy going on as well. So um, really good time to, to get moving with that. But definitely it's a working in a team thing. It's, it's, it's cooperating and collaborating with other people. It's definitely not I'm alone business. Uh, if you try to do the I'm alone business, um, it, it'll, it, you'll feel it quite strongly, I would suggest. So let's just um, the right foot forward and hands up. So that's your right foot. I'll, I'll mirror you as we go through today's class. <laughs> And we've got a really exciting uh, sequence to go through today, the four directions sequence, 
which is really going to help us to work through that change, that change particularly in relationships, but also, you know, cementing this, these, these big ideas that we've had over the last few months that we've been working towards. Um, this will help you with that as well. Um, and also definitely open up to different perspectives, particularly the perspective of your either your work partners, workmates, or your own partner, or even your family. Um, it could be relationships in that respect. Um, and let's just switch to the other leg. Flowing thoughts and emotions, it's also gonna help with that. So it's, it's really gonna help with that, that last big sting from that Mars square, Uran uh, sorry, Mars square with Uranus um, situation going on and also with uh, Mars conjunct Pluto. So it's, it's, it's just gonna help us to just level it out and not, um, not stress out too much. Um, and you'll feel a lot safer too when you, when, you, when you do this. A sense of safety comes in as well. So coming back to the middle, if you have osteoporosis, hip issues, knee, ankle issues, keep your feet on the floor. So just have your foot on the floor and just wriggle, wriggle around like this. Otherwise, you're quite welcome to grab a chair or a wall if you need to, and um, just having a little bit of a shake there. So we're almost through the activation. It usually takes around about 10 minutes and then we get into our, our beautiful um, sequence. So circles in one direction with your ankle and then the other direction. Okay, and out the side. And then out the back, a bit of a shake out the back. And then a little bit of a, a, little bit of a swing there with the leg. All right, and then it, just checking, you know, you don't have sore hips here. Just a nice, gentle little hip swing just to, just to open up those hip flexors there. All right, we're almost there. Let's go to the other side. Again, grab a wall or a chair if you need to, or keep the foot on the floor if you need to as well. And circles with the ankle. So the type of yoga I do is Drew Yoga. Um, and so, of course, we do an activation. Let's go the other way. We do a lovely sequence. We do... A few, a few asanas if we have time, which we do today, and um, then some, some, a deep relaxation, which is really beautiful. It's uh, a very unique to do yoga, and it's, it's the best part of the whole, <laughs> the whole class because you get to consolidate all of that energy, um, and you deeply relax, and it, it really, it really puts you in a good space uh, for, for the rest of your week. Um, not just feeling relaxed, but it actually allows you to, to be the energy, to have that energy a part of your being. And then of course we do some pranayama, some breathing, and then our beautiful meditation at the end. So um, yeah, so it's, it's definitely worth doing. <laughs> um, all right, so let's get into our, our, um, our, our sequence. Have a little drink of water. I'll, uh, I'll show you the sequence first just um, the, the basic movements, and then I'll show you the, the modifications that we'll need to have a look at. Mm. So if you have shoulder issues, high blood pressure, heart condition, again, any movements up here, or head below the waist, not a good idea, okay? So bring your hands much lower for that, that that's, that's there. Hip, ankle, hip replacement, osteoporosis, knee issues, you need to come in when we do it, we need to just go a little bit more gentle, and I will explain that. And um, if, you're, if your core is weak um, or your knees are really bad, you can use a chair, um, and the core is just, just go gently again. So I'll just show you what it looks like. All right, so we, um, I'll just show you just the basic movement. So we put our weight into one leg. We um, lift the other leg as we bring our hands close to each other. And then the hands come out, the heel comes down first, then the, um, then the toes, turn the feet out just a tiny bit, and the, the hands come down, you keep a nice strong core here as you go down. And then the hands come back up and rest, um, actually just a little bit lower, down just in your, in your um, power centre there. <laughs> then you lift the hands up, breathing out, and obviously you're going to have them lower if um, you have any concerns there. Breathe in again and out. Come to the heart this time and then we just turn to the right and then we breathe out. We keep the, the torso upright so we don't do this, okay? We keep the torso upright. Around we go, breathing in. I'll do the breaths later. Hands just hover past the knees and then coming back in and then we turn the right foot towards the front. Then we do the same movement but we bring the left foot in. And heel first, then toes, down you go. You can touch the floor if, you, if you're happy to touch the floor there. Hands just at your power centre there. 
then breathing in and out. This is definitely one of my favourite uh, sequences. And out. And we come back into the heart and we turn the other way. Okay, so it's exactly the same on the other side. And we go past, hover past the knees if you can reach that far down. Back in. And then we turn the, the foot back in, the left foot back in. Bring the other foot back. Technically you're back where you started. And then we, we, we turn around. Um, uh, you know, which way you're going to see. So we're going to turn around to the right, which will be that way for you. Okay, and we're looking the other way. So the idea is you start looking while you're facing the north. Now, if you don't know which way north is um, in your house or wherever you are, uh, that's perfectly fine. You can just guess or, or just do the sequence facing, facing your device rather than going around in circles. And just imagine yourself facing north. Then we're going to be facing east and then south and then west and then come back to north again. So you will literally, you'll be facing north, you'll turn around, you'll face east and then you'll turn around, you'll face south and then you'll turn around again and you'll face um, west. But as I said, not a big deal if you don't know which way those things are. If it's middle of the night, you have no, you can't use the sun to help you work out which way you're going. <laughs> so don't be too concerned. All right. Um, so, yeah, as I said, um, definitely keep the hands lower if you have the shoulder blood pressure heart condition thing. Uh, for hip issues, ankle issues, um, hip replacement, osteoporosis, knee issues, when you come out, you may even need to keep the foot on the floor as you, as you move your, your foot out. Okay, if you're okay to lift the foot, just lift it slightly and just come in much more shallow. All right, and when you come down, you're just going to come down to here. All right, you're not going to go all the way down like this, all right, to get to your position. Um, and as I said, weak, weak core, take it nice and nice and gently here. Definitely don't do too much forward bending. Keep yourself a little bit more upright. And you're quite welcome to do it on the, on the chair um, if your knees are really, really bad. Um, and it's just a matter of you just lift your leg up on the chair. Um, I'll just show you. So with all the movements, you literally just sit your bottom on the, on the very tip of the chair. Um, okay, and then when we come up, you just literally lift your leg up and then we just come down and come to here. And you can still do all of the, the movements past your knees and coming like this, okay? So you can still, you can still do everything and we're gonna go out the other way. So, but just obviously you don't, you're going to be restricting um, the movement of your legs. Okay, lovely. So uh, I hope you enjoy your, um, your sequence here. So, um, we'll get ourselves into Tadasana. So lift up one of your heels and then pivot the heel around so it touches the big toe on the other foot. Okay, so this is this measuring device. And then we lift up the heel and then pivot back. That's, a, that's approximately hit width apart there, um, depending on how big your feet are. <laughs> um, but that should be a reasonable measure there for hip width apart. And then breathing in, straighten up the, to the knees and then breathe out just nice, loosen them off. Move your awareness up to your, your hip area, and then you can just push the pelvis forward and back, and then find a middle ground there. So imagining that you're holding a, some water in your, in your um, pelvis, and you want it to sit nice and steady and balanced in there. All right, and then move your awareness up to your shoulders, so breathing in and out. Lovely. This is when my body goes, oh, are we doing yoga? <laughs> <laughs> and it starts to relax. <laughs> Breathing in and your body, as you, as you do more of the Drew Yoga, you'll find that your body relaxes a lot quicker each time that you do it. So it is worth having a go, at least doing this once in the fortnight. Um, you can even do little snippets. I've been talking to some people and they do just little snippets, um, depending on how much time they have. And then just breathing in, squeeze the shoulder blades together, lifting up, a little bit of a tilt with the chin and then Breathe it out. Lovely. And again, just breathe in and out. <sighs> Lovely. Okay, chin parallel to the floor, arms just relaxed by your side. <sighs> and then imagine there's a string attached to your sternum, lifting you up to the sky. Another string attached to your crown, lifting you up. Feel that really nice lifting sensation. You might feel like your spine is lengthening. If you've done this a, a few classes of the yoga, um, you might feel be able to sense your spine um, lengthening a little bit there. And then breathing in, 
when you breathe out, lift up your pelvic floor. So it's a big muscle from the front to the back under here. So just feel like it's just squeezing in like a kaleidoscope. Just a gentle squeeze. We don't need it to be any more than about 10, 15% uh, for this particular sequence. Okay, lovely. So you're facing the north or you're imagining that you're facing the north. You can imagine blue light or even um, things that are blue in your life, blue colors. Um, and and the, uh, the theme for the northern uh, direction is courage. And we're going to be saying the affirmation, I am filled with courage and strength. Um, you can even think about the Archangel Michael if, you, if you're into the, the angel therapy. I do quite a bit of that in, in a lot of the things that I do. Um, he has sort of a, he can be purple, blue colors, white colors. So you can imagine Archangel Michael with his sword and his, his shield, the courage and strength. So, and I think that's a lovely, a lovely way to um, have a go at that one. So breathing in, when you breathe out, put your weight into your left, your left leg and bend that left knee a little bit so you engage these big muscles here, okay, um, to, to hold you up. We're going to be lifting up the right leg and as I say, keep it on the floor if you need to, if you have any of those health concerns, health considerations. Um, and then breathe in. When you breathe out, just bending down on that leg, put, putting most of your weight now on your left leg as we go down. Hands come up, they're, they're almost touching each other. As the hands come up, the right leg comes up. And then breathing out, heel first, and then toes. Slightly turn out the feet, and then coming down, engage your core. Breathe in, then breathing out, you're coming down and resting your hands on your power center there. You're standing nice and tall, strong here. Breathing in, up you go. And out, keeping the arms a little bit bent here creating a chalice. You're filling this chalice with courage and strength. I am filled with courage and strength. You can imagine the blue light filling up your chalice. Breathing in, breathing out, coming back down to the heart this time. The hands are still just a little distance away from each other. Breathe in, just turn to the right. Keep the shoulders relaxed. Breathing out. Now keep your torso upright here, just having the arms go out. Keep a little bend in your arms. Breathe in, come up above if you're okay with that. The head, creating a rainbow arc and breathing out hover past your knees if you've never done this before please don't be concerned about <laughs> getting this right the first time around breathing in we'll be doing it quite a few times so breathing out put the right foot towards the front we're going to move the left foot now so breathing in up comes the left foot and breathing out heel first out go the toes down you go to whatever distance works for you. If you want a good workout, come to the floor and out. Breathing in. One week I, I taught this and I think I had about five or six classes and I taught it in every single class. By the end of the week, my thighs were, yes, not very happy with me. <laughs> Breathing in and out. I found it a bit difficult towards the end of the week to, uh, to come into the full pose. Breathing in, but it gets you fit and out, out you go. Just start to feel that, that's that courage, courage and strength, creating a rainbow around here, going past the knees, resting, then coming back in. And then turn the, the left foot towards the front, bring the right foot back in, ground your energy. So imagine there's roots growing out of your, your palms of your hands, you can imagine yourself at the beach if you like. It's a really lovely way to do it. <sighs> Which means you would be, fa you would, at the moment, you'd be facing north if it was the east coast. North up, um, if you are in Australia, by the way. <laughs> and um, we're just about to turn around to the ocean if you're on the east coast. So you lift your right heel, you pivot around so you, you're turning to the right, and then you allow your left foot to pivot as well. So now you're facing east. Okay, I'll just come back to the front so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to do exactly the same thing, but now we're facing east. It's green energy, okay, it's generosity, okay, the, the, um, the beautiful energy of generosity. And I am open to give to life, because of course what you give is what you get back. All right, so breathing in. When you breathe out, put your weight into your left, your left leg, bend your left knee so you engage these big guys up here. Breathing in, up you go. And breathing out, heel first, toes pointed out, down you go to whatever level works for you. Breathing in and out, down to your power center. 
Lovely. And then breathing in and out. Feel, feel the strength of this. Feel your generosity. Give to life. Fill your cup with generosity. Breathing in and out. Come to your heart. Breathing in. Looking to the right. Breathing out. Keep the torso upright. Keep the arms a little bit bent. Breathing in and out. Over past your thigh, your knee, sorry. And back into the middle. Turn your right foot to the front. We're going to move the left foot. So breathing in, up you come. Exactly the same movements. And out. Heel first, down you go. And down. Breathing in. And out. Breathing in. And out. Down to your heart. Breathing in. And out. Breathing in. Feel that green, beautiful heart energy. That generosity. And out. Turn your left foot towards the front and then bring your right foot back to where you were. Ground your energy. Just take a nice breath there. Feel yourself letting go of anything that's in your way, any obstacles. And then lift up your right toes, pivot around. You're going to be facing south and allow your left foot to follow you around to the south direction there. I'll just turn back around to the front so we're so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're facing south. It's a beautiful yellow colour. You can imagine the yellow sun if you like, or a beautiful golden colour. And it's acceptance, which is also a, a, a beautiful virtue to have. I accept all that life offers me. Okay, so you had the generosity of the giving and now you're accepting. All right, so breathing in, breathe out, put the weight into your left leg and um, bend the left knee. Breathing in, up we go. And breathe out. Heel first, down we go. Breathe in and out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Oh, feel your chalice. Accept. Accept love. Be willing to receive love and, and gifts and people's time and energy. Breathing in. And out, down to your heart, breathing in, turning to the right, breathing out, reaching out gently, breathing in, and gently coming past your knees, and back in, pivot your right foot towards the front, and then your left foot comes up, so breathing in, and out. You can do this uh, sequence as many times as you like because the beauty of having it on a video recording is you can do it <laughs> over and over again. So you can perfect it as you go through your fortnight as we head towards our new moon. Accept, accept, I accept all that life gives me. Breathing in. I even accept the, the difficult times, the, the difficult people, particularly at the moment, the difficult people that might be coming I might be coming up against. Breathe in, breathe out. If you accept them as, as your teacher, as your guru, as the person who's, who's showing you what parts of yourself you don't like, <laughs> what parts of yourself you've made up, stories you've made up about yourself that you see in this person, breathing in, then turn your left foot to the front and then back down. You'll find that it's all in your, in your numerology chart too. Um, what you're attracting, the people you're attracting, the relationships you're attracting, it's all in the chart. Okay, now we're going to pivot around so we're, we're facing west. So lifting up the toes, round we go, and then going to the west, and then just grounding your energy, really enjoying that grounding sensation. And I'll just turn back around to the front so we can do it together. And this is unconditional love, this is that beautiful ruby red colour. Um, I appreciate and love life. 
Okay, so breathing in, breathing out, put the weight into your left foot, bending your left knee, and then up we come. Breathing in and breathing out. Heel first, turn the, the toes out, down you go. Breathing in, it's like you're receiving unconditional love from the earth. Breathing in and out. Fill your chalice with unconditional love. Breathing in and out. Come to the heart. Breathing in, turn to the right. Breathing out. Keep that torso nice and upright there. Breathing in and out. Down we go. Lovely. Breathing in, back into your heart. The right foot towards the front. And we're going to now move the left foot. So breathing in and out. Down we go. In. Lift up that unconditional love for yourself. Breathing in. Fill your chalice with unconditional love. No conditions. You don't have to be a certain weight, a certain look. You don't have to have certain clothes. You don't have to have a certain job. You don't have to speak a certain way. Breathing in, you just love. Just love yourself exactly the way you are. Breathing in and out. I appreciate and love life. Breathing in, left foot to the front, and then coming back, grounding the energy. We're going to go one more time to the north. So we're going to consolidate all of the energy we've, we've um, been working through. So pivot around one more time to the right and, and bring your left leg in um, to join up with it. And you technically would be facing the way that you started, the north end. Okay, so think about the, the blue, courage and strength, the green, generosity, the yellow, acceptance, and the, the beautiful ruby red, um, unconditional love. And we're going to consolidate all that energy now. So breathing in, breathing out. Put the weight into the left leg, bending the left knee. Breathing in, up we go. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Fill your heart with all that beautiful energy. In and out. To the heart. Breathing in and out. In and out. Round we go. Past the knees. In to the heart. Turn the right, right foot back to the front. And we're going to go with the left foot now. So up we come and out, in and out, down to your power center, breathing in and out, lovely, breathing in and out to the heart, breathing in, feel yourself being more open to change, breathing out open to a different perspective, seeing your relationships from a different perspective. Feel that flow of your thoughts and emotions. In and turn the left foot to the front, bring the right foot back, ground your energy. <sighs> Lovely. I hope you enjoyed that. Have yourself a drink of water. Um, so yeah, that is the uh, the four directions and um, now we're going to move ourselves into um, the charity posture which is also going to help us with our relationships mm. generosity compassion selflessness refreshed and clear mind which is very very helpful and emotional balance particularly with this uh, Mars issue going on at the moment um, we're just going to do the forearm flexor first, so just turning your hands out the other way, so just doing a clasp and see if you can go out the other way. Um, don't be too concerned about this if you can't do the full forearm flexor because 
there's modifications to the, the movement if this is actually a little bit too much for you. You don't need to do the full version. All right, you will need a, a strap for this next bit and it can just be like a long piece of anything, like a, a piece of um, a sheet or, or something you've got around, a blanket or something that you've got around, just something that you can pull taut um, this distance. Okay, so have your hands about a hand width away from your thighs, holding the, uh, holding the strap or whatever you have, a scarf or something, <laughs> and then breathing in, up come the hands, and breathing out, just leaning back a little bit. So I'll show you from the, from the side, it's just a very slight lean back, and this is going for your pecs, okay? It's a nice pec, pec stretch there. And then just release, breathe in again, breathe out, reach back, and then just breathe normally as you hold the stretch. Lovely. All right. And then just release that. Um, I don't think we need the strap again at any point, but just keep it nearby in case you do. Um, we're going to do the hamstrings. So just turning, turning yourself out. Have one leg out to the front, the other leg about 45 degrees, the foot about 45 degrees. Keep the front leg fairly straight and just lean down, walk your hands down until you feel the stretch in the top of the front leg, the back of the top of the front leg. So wherever you get that stretch, whatever position that, that happens in. And just really enjoy that lovely stretch in there. Not overstretching, just get to the point where um, you feel comfortable, you're feeling just a bit of a stretch. And we generally like to hold for around about 20 seconds in total, if we can. And then just gently use your hands if you need to, gently walk yourself back up and we'll go around the other side. So exact same thing. Keep that front leg fairly straight and then just coming down. And of course, if you have blood pressure, heart condition, vertigo, keep the head above the waist and just come to this position. Otherwise, you're welcome to come down a little bit further, wherever, wherever you feel the stretch. So if you are menstruating or pregnant or you have back pain, we're going to be doing the cat instead. Okay, so we're going to come down into the cat. Um, if you have ankle or knee issues, you just need to go gently um, and not quite so wide in our, in our movement. Okay. All right, so the cat, you're on all fours. Um, and if all fours is just not going to work for you, um, definitely just do this in the chair, okay? So just put your hands forward in the chair and just do a very gentle movement with your back. Um, so checking that your knees are approximately underneath your, your hips there and your hands are underneath your, your um, shoulders is what they're called, isn't it? Now you can roll up your mat a little bit and place your hands on the rolled up bit of the mat if you if you do get if you do struggle a little bit with that the um, for the flexors um, if your wrists get a little bit sore and breathing in when you breathe out push the the tummy muscles up towards the sky so you're squeezing them up towards your spine and as you breathe out push the tailbone so this part of your 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 back your tailbone down towards the earth and stretch the spine out as if you're stretching it out past your head. It's a very slight upward arch. And then breathing in, start with the tailbone, push the tailbone up, and then stretching the spine. And you're only looking about a metre and a half ahead on the floor. You're not hyperextending like this, you're just looking a metre and a half on the floor, and you're stretching your spine out. And then breathing out, tailbone first, and then slowly stretch the spine out past, your, past the crown of your head, and continuing. So that's your cat, all right, which is a very, very lovely asana to do. Um, definitely do not do not underrate, underestimate the, uh, the power of the cat pose. It's, it's a really lovely one to do. Um, okay, so the charity posture, um, we're going to, you can do one of three options. Um, you can, uh, the, the most, the big, biggest version, I'm not even sure if I can do it. <laughs> The biggest version um, of the hold is to actually go into the praying hands position behind your back, which I can only just do for a few moments. Um, if you've got really, really good wrists and you're really flexible back there, you may be able to do that with no problem. Um, 
The next option is clasping your hands behind your back like this. And notice when I do that, my, my, my chest opens up. Okay, so it's a, it's a pulling open of the chest, which is what we're after. The other option, if you can't grab your, your elbows, is to clasp your hands behind your back. And again, you should still get an opening up in the chest there, as, as you can see. Okay, um, and what we're going to be doing is very similar to our hamstring stretch, actually. Our one leg's going to be up the front, the other leg's going to be about 45 degrees, the, the foot's going to be about 45 degrees. We're going to face the direction of that leg. We're going to be in our position here, and then we're going to stretch the spine, like as if we're stretching the spine and the head up towards the corner of the room, okay? And over the top of the knee. So not letting the knee go past the ankle, so you, you don't let it go past this position. And of course you can adjust your stance if you need to stretch out further. You stretch it out like as if you're stretching cling wrap over your knee. So your, your spine is a cling wrap and you're stretching it over your knee. Okay, so stretching out, down you go to wherever you feel comfortable. And then starting at the base of the spine, breathing in, coming back up again. Okay. So obviously if you have those concerns, um, hip, ankle, hip replacement, osteoporosis, knee, I'd even say, yeah, the, the weak core, etc. cetera, um, you're not going to go forwards like that. You're, you're going to bring your feet in a lot closer and you're not going to go anywhere near as far. So you'll probably only go, if you do have a weak core or weak back, um, you may just go to here and then just curl back up again. Okay? All right. So let's do our beautiful posture. And this will help you with your relationships. It will help everything come into balance, um, particularly around your relationships. So right foot out the front. The left foot is about 45 degrees pointing out to the side there. Um, make sure that your hips and your chest are facing the direction of your right foot there. Go into whatever clasp works for you out of those three clasps that we were talking about. Breathe in. Breathing out, slightly bend the knee just until it's above the ankle. Stretch your glad wrap up over the top of the knee, just to wherever it works for you. Rest the head and then breathing in, curling back up from the base of the spine back up as you breathe in. Breathing out. And then breathing in, curling up from the base of the spine. Breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. And breathing in, lovely. Ah, okay, so let's go to the other side. So have a little bit of a shake, coming across to the other side. Again, get the, the right foot to be pointing out just a little bit there. Left foot facing forwards. Check your hips and, and chest are facing the direction of your right foot. Make sure your knee won't go past your ankle, um, the, height, the, the position of your ankle there. Clasp your hands again. Breathing in. When you breathe out, stretch your spine across the top of your knee. As far down as what feels comfy for you. And then gently breathing in, curling up from the base of the spine, coming back up. Lovely. Breathing out, down you go. Breathing in, two more. Breathing out, breathing in, and one more. Breathing out. Breathing in, lovely, all done. So I hope you enjoyed your, um, your charity posture. We have one more, one more posture to do, um, which is again, it's going to help you calm down from, from what Mars is still up to, particularly uh, when it went um, exact with its Mars square Uranus just the other day. And, um, and also um, the moon conjunct Pluto, which was causing a little bit of drama there and having a full moon in Aries. Aries is ruled by, by Mars. Um, so, you know, this, this, this uh, 
uh, aggressive and agitated energy is going to still be coming up as we work towards the full moon. So this will help you to come to a place of peace around that. Okay. Um, and it is literally um, bending over. <laughs> All right. So again, if you have high um, or low blood pressure, if you have... Um, uh, I can't even remember what that, that says. Do... Okay, uh, sciatica, if you have disc injuries, neck injuries, oh, it's the cat. So I was trying to work out what that word said. Um, so high or low blood pressure, sciatica, disc injuries, de um, neck injuries, lumbar, uh, head, uh, lumbar problems, um, head cold, block sinuses, glaucoma, detached retina, menstruating first three days, or a hernia. Um, uh, the last one, the hernia, you can do it, but just don't hold it for very long. The rest of it, do the cat. Okay, so if you have any of those concerns, just go back into your cat. Otherwise, come down with me and do the do the peace posture. So it is literally um, breathe in, and when you breathe out, just lean down. So come down to wherever you feel comfortable. If you do have the blood pressure issues, um, uh, what else? Um, the head cold, blocked sinuses, glaucoma, detached retina, menstruating. You could just come to your head just to your waist like this. And you could do the peace posture like this. You're quite welcome to do that, okay? Um, otherwise the cat for the other ones, or you're welcome to come down to wherever you feel comfortable coming. If you can get your fingers underneath your toes, go for it. If you can just grab your ankles or your shins, wherever you're grabbing is perfectly fine as well. And just allowing the head just to relax down. Enjoying this posture. And then breathing in, imagine your breath is going up the back of your legs. Finish the in-breath at the base of your spine. And then breathing out, up your spine, down your arms, back to where your hands are touching your body. Breathe in again, up the back of the, sp back of the legs. Pause at the base of the spine. And then breathe out, up the spine, down the arms, back to where you started. And then one more time, breathing in, up the back of the legs. Pause at the base of your spine, breathing out up the spine, down the arms, back to where you started. And then very gently and slowly walk your hands up, gently curling your spine back up as you come out of your peace posture. You might feel a little bit airy here. Um, yeah, oh. And that's a really good way just to chill out, um, particularly if you have, you're having relationship issues at the moment it's a good way just to, to go and exit stage left and just regather yourself um, it brings you peace obviously it brings you also it soothes your nervous system excellent for twos um, people who have any kind of two energy actually but particularly if you have twos in your major life path number system um, calms your nervous system soothes the nervous system and peace is restored and you feel refreshed as well Okay, now you get to do your deep relaxation. So you'll be laying on your back on the floor. If, if laying on the floor is just not going to happen, please get a chair. And um, just make sure your feet are touching the floor. You can put a pillow underneath your feet if you need to. Um, if it's cold where you are, get a nice thick blankie and put it over you. It's lovely to be all, all um, cocooned up in something for, this, for the relaxation. Um, if that works for you. And... Um, if it's, if it's warmer, obviously, maybe you can put um, something a little bit lighter, but you will cool down, okay? So I do say to people, put a slightly warmer thing over, the, over you than what you maybe think um, you might need because um, you will cool down because uh, you'll be laying there for 20 minutes. All right, so laying on your back, if that's comfortable for you. Um, if you, if you are heavily pregnant, of course, lay on your side, on your left side, um, or sitting up on a chair. Um, okay. Uh, so laying on your back with your legs just flopped out to the sides, wherever, wherever they feel comfortable is perfectly fine. Um, allow your spine to have its natural curvature. And have your arms out by your sides, palms faced up. Tuck your chin in just a little bit so you have a lovely long neck. And give yourself permission to deeply relax. 
really um, allow this energy from what we've done with our four directions, with our beautiful charity posture and our peace posture, um, to actually settle inside of your body, to actually become a part of your being over the next week. Um, and, and, you know, to, to deeply relax and just basically rejig everything and put everything back into balance. Um, so give yourself permission to, to relax for the next 20 minutes. This is your time. This is your special gift to yourself. So closing your eyes if that's comfortable for you, or you can just um, gaze very, very softly if you prefer. Move your awareness down to your legs, and down to your feet and your toes. And then breathing in, squeeze the feet and the toes. Nice big squeeze. And breathing out, release. Breathing in again, push the toes away from the body. You'll feel a big stretch in your shins. And breathing out, release. Breathing in again, push the heels away from the body and the toes up towards the head. Big breath in and breathing out, release. Move the awareness further up the legs, up to the knees. Breathing in, gently pushing the knees down in towards the floor. Feel the quads engage to do this. Big breath in and breathing out. Release. Move the awareness further up the legs, up to the buttocks. Breathing in, squeezing the buttocks muscles. And feel like your hips are rising just a little bit up towards the sky. And breathing out, release. Move the awareness to the lower part of your back. Breathing in, gently pushing your lower back down in towards the floor. Feel that gentle pressure between your lower back and the floor. And breathing out, release. Keep the awareness in the lower back. Breathing in again, allow the lower back to press against the, the floor. Gently pushing your lower back towards the floor. Feel that gentle pressure between your lower back and the floor. And then breathing out, release. Move your awareness around to the front of your torso. Breathing in, squeezing your abdominal muscles down in towards the floor. Nice big squeeze. And breathing out, release. Move the awareness further up the torso, up to the chest. Breathing in and pushing the chest up towards the sky. At the same time, pushing the shoulder blades in towards each other underneath the body. Big breath in, big stretch. And breathing out, release. And then reversing that motion, breathing in, lifting the shoulders off the floor and pushing the chest down in towards the floor. Feel that beautiful stretch across the shoulder blades. And breathing out, release. Move the awareness across the shoulders and down the arms, all the way down to the hands and the fingertips. Breathing in, gently curling the fingers over to make a very soft fist with both hands. And then breathing out, release your gentle fists. Breathing in again, make a much stronger fist with both hands. Lifting both arms just a few centimetres off the floor. And breathing out, releasing your fists and splaying those fingers out as far from each other as possible. Then turn the palms in towards the body, down towards the floor and even a little further around. Turn your palms back in towards your body and then up towards the sky even a little bit beyond. And breathing out, releasing your arms and your hands back down to the floor, palms faced up. Move your awareness back up your arms, up to your neck. Breathing in, squeezing the neck. And 
And breathing out, release. Move your awareness up to your chin and your jaw, your mouth and your tongue. Without making any sounds, imagine you're saying the letters A-E-I-O-U. And opening the mouth really wide and doing a lovely big yawn. <sighs> Pushing your tongue up to the sky, across to the right, across to the left around in a circle in one direction and then around in a circle in the other direction. And place your tongue back in your mouth and engage your jaw. Allow the jaw to go around in one direction and then around in the other direction. And then release the jaw and close the mouth. Make a frown and a smile at the same time. Push your eyebrows all the way down and lift up corners of your mouth as high as you can. Big breath in, and breathing out, releasing your frowny smile. Then looking all over your face for all the muscles you can find. Breathing in, squeezing all your facial muscles. Nice big squeeze. And breathing out, release. Then move your awareness around to just behind your ears and all over your scalp. And imagining that you can squeeze this area. Breathing in, giving it a lovely big squeeze. And breathing out. Release. Then make a request that you would like all the effects of fear to be cleansed and vacuumed from your body. Move your awareness to a beautiful celestial vacuum tube at the crown of your head. Request the speed you would like this tube to go at, slow, medium or fast. And then allow this vacuum tube to work its way into the crown of your head cleansing and vacuuming away all the effects of fear from behind your eyes, your right ear, the back of your head, your left ear, vacuuming into your sinus area, down into your mouth, the left side of your jaw, the right side of your jaw, vacuuming down your throat, down your neck, into your right kidney, your right lung, Vacuuming down your right arm, all the way down to your right hand and fingertips. Vacuuming back up your right arm, to your right shoulder, across to your left shoulder. Down your left arm, to your left hand and fingertips. Vacuuming back up your left arm, into your left lung. And then vacuuming into your heart. And vacuuming into your stomach. And then vacuuming into your pancreas, your spleen, your liver, your left kidney, your right kidney. Vacuuming down into your bowels, your lower pelvic organs, your left hip, your right hip. Vacuuming down your right knee, leg, all the way down through your right knee, into your right foot and toes. Vacuuming back up your right leg into your right buttocks, across your left buttocks. And vacuuming down your left leg through your left knee, all the way down to your left foot and toes. And then requesting that all the space that's now being created, now being released. And now requesting that all the space that's now being created by cleansing and vacuuming away 
all the effects of fear from your body. Be filled up with beautiful, bright white healing light. And so the switch on the vacuum tube is reversed. And as you breathe in, this beautiful, bright white healing light enters your left foot, your left toes, your left ankle, lower leg, knee, upper leg and buttocks. And as you breathe out, this beautiful light settles into all of your left leg. The tube moves across to your right foot. And as you breathe in, this beautiful light enters your right toes, your right foot and ankle, your right lower leg, knee, upper leg and buttocks. And as you breathe out, this beautiful light settles into all of your right leg. The tube moves down to the base of your pelvis. And as you breathe in, this beautiful light enters your pelvic area, your middle torso, your upper torso, chest, heart and lungs. And as you breathe out, this beautiful light settles into all of your torso. Your tube moves across to your right hand. As you breathe in, this beautiful light enters your right fingertips, fingers, palm, wrist, forearm, elbow, upper arm and right shoulder. And as you breathe out, this beautiful light settles into all of your right arm. The tube moves across to your left hand. As you breathe in, this beautiful light enters your left fingertips, your left fingers, palm, wrist, forearm, elbow, upper arm, and your left shoulder. And as you breathe out, this beautiful light settles into all of your left arm. The tube moves down to the base of your spine. And as you breathe in, this beautiful light enters the base of your spine, works its way up through every single disc and vertebrae in your lumbar spine, your thoracic spine, up into your cervical spine, your neck, your head and the crown of your head. As you breathe out, this beautiful light settles into your head, neck and spine. Your whole body is now glistening and gleaming and sparkling with this beautiful, bright white healing light. And you affirm to yourself, I am open to change and seeing things from a different perspective. My thoughts and emotions are flowing I am peace, I am calm, I am safe, all is well. I am open to change and seeing things from a different perspective. My thoughts and emotions are flowing. I am peace, I am calm, I am safe, all is well. I am open to change and seeing things from a different perspective. My thoughts and emotions are flowing. I am peace. I am calm. I am safe. All is well. And sit with those affirmations for a few moments.
and then move your awareness to a space just above the crown of your head. A ball of beautiful golden light is hovering there just above the floor. You take a deep breath in and all of this beautiful golden light comes from the ball and works its way into the crown of your head. And as you breathe out, this beautiful light showers down your head, your neck, your spine, across your shoulders, down your arms, into your hands and fingertips, showering down your torso through your pelvis, showering down your legs through your knees, showering all the way down to the very tips of your toes. Every single cell in your body has been re-energized, rejuvenated and revitalized by this beautiful golden light. You start to notice what parts of your body are touching the floor, your heels, your calves, your buttocks, your shoulders, the backs of your arms, the backs of your hands and the back of your head. You start to wriggle your fingers and wriggle your toes. You very gently bring your knees up to your chest and give them a lovely hug with your arms. Then gently sway them from side to side and then around in a circle in one direction and then around in the other direction and then gently rolling over to your right side, resting your head on your right arm, using this important moment to consolidate what we've done so far in this lovely yoga class. We did the beautiful four directions, which opened us up to change and seeing things from a different perspective, allowed our thoughts and emotions to flow and gave us a sense of safety and security. Our beautiful charity posture brought generosity, compassion, selflessness and a refreshed and cleared mind, emotional balance and positive self-esteem. As we navigate through our relationships this, this, uh, over this uh, full moon, particularly because the sun and moon are square Saturn, uh, a reality check on our relationships and the sun is in Libra and the moon is in Aries having a good look at our relationships from a, a place of generosity and compassion and selflessness. And of course our peace posture soothed and calmed our nervous system, restored peace to our body and our mind and refreshed us. And of course the deep relaxation which re-energizes, revitalizes and rejuvenates the entire body and entire mind in preparation for the rest of your day and for your week to come. And then imagining yourself sitting in the upright position before you move and then keeping your eyes closed, gently pushing yourself up into a sitting position and then gently rubbing those palms together, create a nice warmth between your palms and then place those nice warm palms over your closed eyes. Allow the eyes to open in that nice, warm, safe place. Then gently tapping the forehead, the temples, the chin and the jaw, back up to the top of the head, the back of the head, the shoulders, the chest, down the side of your body, your thighs and knees and buttocks. And shake out the side. Breathing in, reaching up. And breathing out. Oh, a little bit of a shoulder roll. Lovely. I hope you enjoyed your deep relaxation. We're going to do a couple of pranayama now, some breathing techniques before we go, we launch into our, our beautiful um, meditation, which is a slightly different one um, this week to what I've done before. Um, it's modifying a couple of different meditations and putting them, putting them into one, which is something I, I tend to do with everything. <laughs> Get a bit of this and a bit of that and, and make it work for what, for what we're, um, we're requiring. Uh, for this particular moon, uh, for our full moon in Aries. So first up, we're just going to do our deep yogic like we always do because that's always the default if you have any, any um, health considerations for the other ones. So you can just place your hands, on, one on your abdomen and one on your chest and breathing in. Imagine the breath is going into your tummy, so expand the tummy, breathe in through the nose, expand the chest, the upper chest, pause, 
and breathe out, empty the tummy, chest, upper chest, pause. Breathe in, tummy, chest, upper chest, pause, and breathe out. Tummy, chest, upper chest, pause. And one more time, breathe in, expand the tummy, chest, upper chest, pause, and breathe out, empty the tummy, chest, upper chest. Lovely. So of course you can default to that at any time if you need to. If the, um, the first one we're going to do, if you have an ear infection or epilepsy, please go back to the deep yogic breath. Um, this is our beautiful um, hummingbee breath, which is just amazing. It releases serotonin, it, it stimulates your pituitary gland, it's a heart awakener, so it brings open that heart energy so you can work through these relationship um, things that you might be having at the moment. Um, calm, joy, relaxed, restful. So it, it, it releases anxiety, depression, stress and insomnia. So it's a real all-rounder awesome thing to do <laughs> at any time. And you basically just hum like a bee. Okay, so you breathe in. Again, fill up your tummy. Keep your mouth closed and then just hum. You want to try to get the vibration happening on your lips at the back of your mouth and maybe even in the rest of your skull if you can get things to vibrate. I think I've just woken up little snowy here, haven't I, darling? Woken you from your slumber with my noises. <laughs> so breathing in again and out. Have a little break. With any pranayam, it's good just to take it very slowly at the start, even though it seems really simple. Um, you can over pranayam very easily and then have to sort of um, not be able to do any pranayam for a few days to recover. So it is quite potent, so just be very careful if this is the first time you've done this kind of thing. Breathing in again, fill up the tummy. And... And because of the energy going on at the moment, we will do the Yoni Mudra as well. We'll incorporate that. So um, what it does is we're going to put um, our thumbs in our ears when we're ready and our, our point fingers on our eyebrows and our middle fingers are on just on the tips of our eyelashes. The ring fingers are just at the edge of the nose and your little finger is up the edge of your, um, your mouth. And so when you're ready, we're just going to do three breaths. You're going to block your ears and you're really going to come into yourself. So three breaths of humming bee whenever you're ready and then just bring your hands down when you're done. So blocking your ears and breathing. chilled out now <laughs> um, and because we have this hot Aries full moon and Mars still doing its hotness and uh, and a few other things going on the um, very very close to the equator um, the full moon is quite close to the equator making it all very passionate and hot we'll do the cooling breath just a couple of little breaths here um, we've done this I think for the last two or three classes because it has been so hot this Mars energy has been so hot and of course as you know we've had droughts in the southern hemisphere We've had a lot of fires in the Northern Hemisphere, which is actually, and even um, a volcano in Hawaii flaring up this hotness. Um, because it is square um, Uranus um, and uh, moon conjunct Pluto, you've got, you've got a lot of energy around the Earth. Okay, it's very, it's very Earth hotness as well. Um, so you may be particularly influenced by this if you have some strong Earth energy in your, in your chart as well. So the cooling breath, always a good one to do, always a good default. But if you do have um, respiratory disorders, asthma, bronchitis, chronic constipation, lower body ailments, if it's really cold where you are and you get cold really easily, um, if you live in a cool climate or polluted environment or if you have sensitive teeth, don't do the tooth version of this. Um, go back to the deep yogic. 
okay? So you can curl your tongue over like that if you can, or you can breathe through your teeth, or as I said, you can go to the deep yogic. So I'll do through the teeth so you can hear me doing my, my movements. So breathing in, pause, feel the cool in your mouth, close the mouth out through the nose. Breathing in, pause, feel the cool in the mouth, close the mouth out through the nose. Pause, breathe in again. Pause, feel the cool in the mouth. Close the mouth, out through the nose. One more time. Breathing in. Pause, feel the cool in the mouth. Close the mouth, out through the nose. Really good just for cooling you down, calming the nervous system. Great for stress, anxiety, overactive or agitated mind emotional balance um, and um, confusion, anger, anything like that. Just bring yourself back. Use this yoga to your advantage. Okay, so now we're going to do the meditation. It's just going to be a nice little 10 minute meditation, as it always is. And again, it's going to calm this, this, this agitation, this frustration and anger um, that we've been feeling, these intense feelings. So. Um, uh, we're going to be doing just the, um, the mudra of wisdom, okay, so the pointer finger and the thumbs touching each other. Um, you can go palms faced up, palms face down, or even bring the hands in uh, to a chakra if that works better for you. Okay, and um, as I said, just 10 minutes, just checking that you're nice and upright. You can sit on a chair, of course, but just keep your back away from the back of the chair and make sure that your feet are touching the floor, so um, a pillow if, if needed or, or a bolster of some sort to help you out there. Okay, so closing your eyes if that's comfortable for you, or gazing very softly at the floor if you prefer. All right, and we'll just settle the body first. So breathing in, move your awareness to your, your toes, your feet, your ankles, lower legs, knees, upper legs and buttocks. Feel where they're touching the floor. And breathing out, allow your whole lower body, lower part of your body to relax and settle into the earth. Breathing in again, move your awareness to your pelvic area, your middle torso, your upper torso, chest, heart and lungs. Pause and as you breathe out, allow your torso to rest and settle in the sitting position. Breathing in again, move your awareness to your fingertips. See if you can feel a little tingle between the fingers. Your fingers, your palms, wrists, forearms, elbows, upper arms and shoulders. And as you breathe out, allow your arms, shoulders and hands to rest and settle in the mudra. Breathing in again, move your awareness to your spine, your neck, your head, the crown of your head. As you breathe out, allow your head, neck and spine to rest and settle down into the earth. Imagine yourself at the edge of a beautiful lake in the middle of the night, in the middle of a forest. You feel very safe, very protected by the forest and the animals in it. The lake is big enough so that the full moon that's shining so brightly beyond the other side of the lake, beyond the forest, is reflected down into the surface, onto the surface of the lake. You gaze at the lake, admiring its wonder and its beauty. But you notice that it starts to get quite a few ripples in it. It gets quite agitated, quite volatile. Parts of the lake are even looking like they're steamy. And you realise, it occurs to you that the lake is reflecting your own internal environment. That you've been feeling this Mars square Uranus quite profoundly. You've been noticing this eruptive and volatile energy. This demand for change, demand for freedom and very, very intense feelings. 
and they're boiling in front of you in this lake, spurting out steam and anger. The surface of the lake is very rough and agitated. You gaze up at the moon and you realize that the moon can help you to soothe and calm this fire inside of yourself. Take a deep breath in and the moon's energy comes towards you and enters your heart center. And a beautiful little white sphere of light rests in your heart center as you breathe out. You breathe in again and you find in your body where the fire and the anger and the frustration and tension is. You see it as a red fire and as you breathe out you send this moon energy up or down to wherever that fire is. As you breathe out this beautiful moon energy soothes and calms the fire inside. You breathe in again and you find another spot where there's anger and frustration and eruption going on in your mind or your body. As you breathe out, you send the moon energy there. It soothes and calms and cools this energy. Relaxing, refreshing and calming. You breathe in again, you go to another place where you're feeling agitation or stress or tension or pain. As you breathe out, you send that moon energy from your heart towards that place. Calming, soothing, nurturing and cooling the heat and the anger. Breathing in one more time, finding the last place that's hiding away some resentment or frustration, or irritation assertiveness. As you breathe out, send that moon energy towards that place in your mind or your body, soothing, calming and clearing, relaxing. And breathing into your heart, feeling that moon energy. As you breathe out, send the moon energy up to your third eye and allow it to sit there for a few moments. As you do this, you notice that the lake is calming down. You can see the reflection of the moon perfectly on the lake. All of the ripples and the steam and the bubbles have gone. You allow yourself to sit there in stillness with your moon energy on your third eye, clearing and calming your vision.
And then breathing in, move your awareness to your, your head, your neck, your shoulders, arms, hands and fingertips, the upper torso, middle torso and pelvic area. As you breathe out, allow your whole upper body to come back into this room, into this place of awareness. Breathing in again, move your awareness to your buttocks, your upper legs, knees, lower legs, ankles, feet and toes. As you breathe out, allow your whole body to come back into this room, into this present state of awareness. Have a sense of where your body is in the room. And then very gently opening your eyes, releasing your mudra. Do a little bit of a rub, a little bit of a tap. Wake yourself up. A bit of a shake. Breath in and out. I hope you enjoyed that meditation. And uh, if you are particularly feeling the heat at the moment, um, feeling it like it's a bit too hot in the kitchen, um, you're quite welcome to do any part of this uh, class at any point. Um, and please, of course, do share this with anybody that you know that might benefit uh, from this class or from doing these classes regularly, particularly those who can't uh, get to a class near them. They might live quite remotely or have a, have a job that um, doesn't allow them to get to classes. They'd work um, odd hours. Um, or maybe they have little ones and they can't get to class or maybe the money money um, is a little bit scarce for them and they they're unable to get there so um, or the elderly um, this is fantastic for, for as I said any any um, any age any level of fitness any level of flexibility it's quite acceptable for so um, and it is completely free there are no catches they won't I won't ever start charging you for this so you're quite welcome to get addicted to these classes and they will always be here every fortnight so um, I hope you really enjoy the class and do it as many times as you like. And um, I look forward to seeing you again for our new moon coming up in October. Until then, namaste.